Okay, I'll buy something from here on. This is my purchase of the of the month. I'm gonna try to buy one piece every time I get paid. Since I literally donated my whole closet away. I've been feeling like I want to get my swag up. You know, I've been feeling like I want to look how I want to feel. You feel me? I feel like a lot of my old clothes is outdated. It's, uh, it's really just, I don't know. I want to say favorite high school. I just don't resonate. I just don't resonate with it no more. And that's okay. You're not wrong with that. And I think that, you know, that's what growing up is about. That's what, that's what maturing is. That's what, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to really explain it. I feel like that's, a, that's where transformation is. I even feel like that's how success is also breeded. Like, imagine trying to be successful and you don't even look how you want to look like when you get to where you want to get to. You feel me? You got to start somewhere. But most importantly, you got to start now. What do you have control of? You know, there's certain things you have control of, right? If you want to make changes, your parents, you have uh, control over your environment, whether you believe so or not. You have control over, you know, how much money you spend. Outside of like, right, your necessities, you definitely have control over if you go out to eat or not, or if you go and you spend $100 on a t-shirt or you have control over these things, right? You also have control over how you smell. I, I don't think a lot of people take that into consideration when they want to make changes. Like, imagine not wearing cologne to wearing cologne every day. That's going to do something for you, but also that's going to do something for people outside of you. They're going to be like, oh, he's not Ruben who smells like shit no more or Ruben who be smelling, smelling a little garlicky or smelling like straight up Maggie, like a Maggie block. Now he's Ruben with the nice cologne. Now his Ruben smells good. You know, that, that'll do something for you and your confidence. I also feel like you have control over, believe it or not, colors. You have, you, I don't think we take into consideration like the small things to make a shift in your life and to make a change or to be successful. Like it starts really fucking small. Maybe it starts from not you wearing black all the time to you just maybe wearing blue, the color you've always liked and have been scared to wear. Then you start wearing blue, you overcome something. It does something to your sight. You start reminding yourself of something. I don't know, like I don't have the fucking answers or the right words, but these are things that we have control over that can help us, essentially. You have control over how you spend your time and what you want to do with your time. You could work or not work, but you know if you don't work, you have to find a way to get money. So now you're investing your time into learning a skill, a trade, or a certain mindset that can get you bread, right? Like we have control over, um, believe it or not, our emotions. We can literally control how we feel. Yeah, some shit might be happening. Sad, mad, whatever. But at the end of the day, you choose what you want to feel, you know? Your hair, you have control over your hair. At least most people do. Maybe not most, like maybe half. I don't know. It depends. It depends on how what you think about your hair and what you want to do with your hair. Uh, yeah, like you also have control over your faith and how God responds to you. It is ultimately up to you. And the way you find out is reading your word. There's so many things that pour into our ourselves, our change, our future. You know? I just want to remind somebody out there that you might not feel like you have control over your life, but you really fucking do. You really do. And I think like that's the devil. <laughs> I sound like a fucking one of those really churchy Christians, but I think like that's the devil trying to get to you, think making you believe that you don't. Now, I'm not saying you could become a millionaire and, you know, all this shit. 
I like to think logical. Statistically, very few people do become millionaires in their lifetime. But you could plant a seed. You could start living in a certain way. Maybe you won't get there, but your kid will. And I think, if anything, that is better. That is way better than you making it. Right? Because now if you... Now, if you're certain that whatever you're sowing right now and you believe in whatever you're sowing right now and you're nurturing and watering whatever it is that you're sowing right now, you best believe that shit is going to overflow to whoever is around you and whoever is next to you. You can still live comfortably in your life. You don't have to be a millionaire, but you can live comfortably. I think we could all get to a space and place where, you know, Somehow, some way, depending on whatever obstacles you've got in your life, I think we could get to a place of comfort. And then because you set yourself up, now whoever comes after you has a has a there are a few steps ahead now than where you first started. I think a lot of us look at purpose and dreams from a very egotistical and selfish way. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think like when you really just lay a strong foundation in your lifetime, I think you'll be more happy happy later on when you become old and selfless, when you learn how to love people and take care of people. I think you realize that, damn, like your hard work did pay off and that maybe you might not see it in here, but your kids will and your grandkids will. And I think that offers more satisfaction than anything in this lifetime. Because think about it. Knowing that people you love and give a fuck about won't have to go through what you went through in order to get a fraction of what you got. And if anything, they'll be reaping 100, 300, 400 times whatever it is that you got. Man, the comfort in knowing that, that's real comfort. Having a secure future, not just for yourself, but for your family. Like, this might sound like generational wealth, but like, I'm talking even outside of material shit. Like, imagine just creating a, a certain type of lifestyle that your kids could adopt in order to achieve and receive everything that they want. Imagine your kids being selfless, but also discerning and intuitive and, and intelligent and creative and free emotionally, mentally, and spiritually free. Knowing that they're going to be great kids, good kids, they're not going to get into shit because they know better because they saw you live a certain lifestyle. That shit is important. That shit is so fucking important. And I've never, like, this is coming to me right now as I record and speak this. But the more I, I pursue a dream, the more I pursue a uh, something that I genuinely want, it starts to feel like, I don't know how to explain this shit, but it's just like, is it worth it? And I don't, before I used to think that was a bad thing to think about, but it's not, it's really not. Like I can still pursue everything. I just, I don't have to be famous. And I also don't have to make a million because at the end of the day, I genuinely love making art. I love exploring new creative hobbies. I love doing this shit. I love being there for people. I love loving people, right? I love just being me. So why am I stopping myself from that? Why am I stopping myself from genuine and true success? At the end of the day, real success is just being an individual, being a free thinker, being a liberator of expression. Just being you, son. That's the most inspiring shit in the world. That is genuine success. You know how many millionaires don't can't even be themselves? You know how many people like with, with platforms and massive success are depressed? I hope that this shit goes viral enough that people, maybe we can get some testimony so we can get a real clear fucking view of what this world really is. Because at the end of the day, because you're not allowing yourself to be who you are, you're depriving mad people of doing the same. And that's how I think about all this shit. That's why I really sit up here 
and I try to be myself the best way I can. And for some people, it's like, oh, some people might think like, dog, just be yourself, just be yourself. But it's not as easy as people think it is because the same person telling you that is wearing a hundred layers of mask. They're just masking too. If anybody is experiencing life, they know already that being yourself is one of the hardest things to achieve in this lifetime. Because by the time you are conscious enough, you, you've gone through enough things to shape you, to make you feel like you are not valid. Maybe nowadays, maybe the kids growing up right now, this brings me back to that point. The kids growing up right now, the next generation, that's why they're so fucking free. They're so free of life, free of, free of expression. These motherfuckers are smart as shit. They know how to articulate what they genuinely feel. Like we think, we always thought my generation, the 90s babies and the 80s babies and the fucking late, or maybe a little bit early, maybe in the 2000s, that's as far as we go. We thought we was gonna start the revolution. Nah, it's these motherfuckers. It's actually they kids. Cause they still got work to do now. They picked up where we left off. Now, their kids, woo, them motherfuckers gonna be something. And and the funny thing is we get to experience a lot of our labor in real time. A lot of our parents haven't. Even if they're alive right now, they're just so stubborn and closed minded and their hearts are hardened that they can't even experience what they laid out for us. Ah, oh, man. If I was to summarize, I guess what I just expressed, I would say this. One, be grateful. No matter what your relationship with your parents are in this lifetime, just be grateful they created you, okay? Be grateful that you have an opportunity to make a change and to break the chains that uh, have been shackling your lineage. You have an opportunity to do something extremely different and extremely life-changing. A lot of us think that life ends when we die. No, life literally continues. And I'm not talking about blood family either. I'm talking about like spiritual family, adopted families, right? Good friends. There's some people who like didn't really give birth to us, but like they created us. We all have that one person that opened our minds and our eyes to who we are as genuine people. So be grateful for those people in your life. Secondly, once you're aware of this, once you're aware of like life, it starts to work. And by starting to work, it's like work on yourself, work how to be you 100% of the time. And then three, make sure you share that forward with your coworkers, with your friends, with your kids, wife, loved ones, right? And how does that look like, right? I feel like that looks like just being a liberator of expression, expressing yourself 100% of the time. And I don't mean like, how do I word this? Disruptively, because I think you can still be disruptive and kind. I think you can still be dis dis disruptive and qualm. Is that the word I'm looking for? Like calm and stern and stoic? You can still disrupt yourself in many different ways. The only time you ring the alarm is when you need to. And you'll know when you need to. I think we all in, in, instinctively and we all organically know when we need to be angry. When we need to be sad and have the opportunity to be sad. We know these things. We have control over our emotions, y'all. We genuinely do. And 
yeah, uh, that's the that's my uh, that's my spiel. Uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.